Hello everyone, I'm Chesterk44 and welcome to this let's play of Avernum 3. Last episode we took a look in the portal fortress over there. And we're walking around in Upper Avernum. I feel like there's something down here, just from the way that things are over here. I feel like... I guess I was wrong. Anyway, uh, let's go back to exploring a bit. I feel like, from what I saw, that there's a... The ever-present green glowing fungus on the cave ceiling above is unusually bright here, making the terrain quite visible. The view of the mushrooms to the north and the clear blue lake beyond mm -hmm. it is very pretty. As you admire your view, your knowledge of natural lore enables you to spot a rough trail leading through the mushrooms to the north. It hasn't been traveled for mm -hmm. some time. Wandering through this peaceful mushroom field pays off. In a small crevasse, you find a cache. It has been sitting here for some time. The food has rotted away, but there is a sack of copper coins and a quiver full of arrows waiting to be taken. Take it. You rapidly loot the cache. Luckily, the arrows are still usable. As you leave, however, you see a band of humans approaching. They don't look pleased that someone has found their old supply cache. Six brigands, an archer, and an apprentice mage. Well, okay then. And... Ice lances. There we go. It's a nice sword that Nippur has there. Alright, cast it again. There you go. And we are good. Ooh, an unidentified ring. Alright, let's see. The ring, we don't... Oh, we could grab the iron arrows. Ash, though, that's actually better than the bow we got. Iron studded armor, and... Wand of bolts. Don't think we need any of the rest. Okay, what have we got? Wand of bolts, and go to Pollux. Steel bolts, and iron arrows. And javelins. We actually have some things we need to sell and get identified. Okay, the ash bow should go to Pollux. Just like that. And steel arrows, iron arrows. Yeah, give those iron arrows to Nippur. Yeah, that's way more arrows than we need. The bolts and the javelins we can sell. Let's go get these things identified. There should be someone who can identify things down here, if I remember right. Back in the, uh, portal. Fortress. Place. Uh, yes, I believe in here. You. Uh... Here we are. We got a shield ring, and... A cursed large shield. How is that armor, anyway? Okay, iron studded, we're fine. Okay, the shield ring is actually useful. Ah, oh, what the hell, we don't really need to hold on to the gold and silver rings as they are. We'll sell them, and the rest of those things. I th think we can sell things to you. I think. So, we can sell things to you? I guess not. Okay, then. I guess we need to go back to the east in order to sell things. Okay. I will make a quick run to sell these things, then. Shouldn't take long. Either way, I see we're doing a repeat of the most annoying part of Avernum 2. That is, running back and forth and back and forth over and over again in order to complete quests or do other things. There's not everywhere has a, uh, thing. Oh, hey! We got another 25 coins. Okay, now let's trade. Sell that, sell that, sell that. You won't take the shield, sell that. And that's all. Okay. We'll leave the shield here then. Now let's go. Back out to the northwest a bit the next town that's over there. Oh, it's already day five. Hmm. Okay, uh, around this way. Up this way, and over here. 
Looks like there's... Ah, there's a town here. Now what the hell, let's go visit. Watch it. Okay. We'll watch it. If you insist. Ooh, there's even a boat here. Ah, oh, it's not ours. Structure over there. Hummer's foodstuffs. Oh, here's someone. This shifty-looking man wanders aimlessly but quickly around the town. It takes a minute to catch up with him. He doesn't seem keen on talking to you. He looks you over, then seems to recognize you. Call me Asp! Why are you wandering around? He looks you up and down carefully. I like wandering and observing. Where have you wandered? Here and there, like you. And what have your observations revealed? Well, you know, there's a lot to be seen by someone who likes to pay attention. Like maybe you might have noticed something peculiar nearby. Nearby where? Like in the northwest corner of town. What's there? There's a building up there with no doors, no entrances, nobody in or out. Been watching for days, and you know what's really bizarre? What can be more bizarre than a building without doors? Nobody around here owns up to noticing it. Mention it and everybody gets real uncomfortable and pretends they don't know what you're talking about. What's the big secret? Got any guesses what it might be? Some secret of Vernon thing, I tell you. I shouldn't be going after it like I am, but I really want to know what's in there. Wait, do you work for a Vernum? Uh, never mind, I don't know anything about anything! He backs away and looks over at the dark stone building nervously. Hmm. I'll well, we'll take a look in a bit. Let's take a look in here. Murr's foodstuffs. Ah, Nephil. There is a Nephilim sitting behind the counter chopping mushrooms. This is not too unusual. Some Nephilim have made peace with humans and taken to living among them. A few, but not many. My name is Hamar. Welcome to my shop. What kinds of things do you make here? He purrs excitedly. I make all types of foodstuffs for my good human buyers. You can purchase all of them that you want and be assured of their edibleness. Why do you say myrrh so much? Its whiskers twitch. Excusing me. It is a noise we in the film often make in speaking. Why wouldn't your food be edible? Be assured that there are none of the delicious rats and bats in the fine foods I am making. All those things are saved for me and my mate. Only we appreciate them as one should. I only serve human food, which be hard to keep. You look at the food it is preparing, and indeed, there is no sign of the sort of small animal a cat would find appealing. You have a mate? We in a fill mate for life, like humans sometimes do. She is hunting. I prefer to cook. It's hard to prepare human food? Easy to cook it, but hard to get it. Bats are easy to find, but cows are hard. I lost a group of them not long ago. Valuable, tasty cows. If we see your cows, we'll let you know. He makes a soft, purring noise. That is kind. If you see them, you will know it because each has a pair of crosses branded into its thicker flesh. Do not trouble yourself too much, though. You have many important missions. Thank you. Hamar's tail twitches happily as he and he graces you with a toothy grin. It's not often that we see a peaceful Nephil. Many feel that way about us, but I see a Nephil in front of me who has had the honor of being chosen to go to the surface, and I know there is hope for peace. We and humans must work together. Empire is far enough for both. I agree about the Empire. It spits, annoyed. And we can get food if we need it. Okay, keep an eye out for his cows. Sounds fair enough. Looks like this is the inn over here. So, let's go take a look at the inn. Oh, there's someone over here. Doesn't want to talk. Okay. The Phoenix Inn! Vacancy! Let's see. This man is intensely unappealing. He has bushy whiskers, a distracting personal odor, and wart moss stains on his short on his shirt. Wart moss is chewed, much like tobacco. He fixes a beady eye on you as you approach. Call me goin skin. Do you have a job in New Cotra? <laughs> ah sails the lake. Oh really? What's on the lake? Anything interesting? <laughs> yep. A lot of a lot of cave fish. So plenty of them. See some interesting sights too. Real interesting sights. What are the cave fish like? 
Alright, clammy and weird looking. Good eating. Tell me about the sights. <laughs> Interesting, that's for darn sure. Lots of peculiar goings on out there. Lots of stuff to see, or maybe you got a boat. You wouldn't know where I can get a boat? <laughs> Interesting, you should mention it. I got an old boat that needs to, that I need to unload. If you might be into some sort of purchase, let me know. I ain't going anywhere. It's a bargain at 500 gold, after all. I mean, it's steep, I know, but hey, I'm the only guy with boats. I'll buy it later. Uh, by the way, what are you chewing? <laughs> Lord Moss, live for the stuff. Want some? You decline. Okay, at least we know where to go if we want a boat, and we may. The lake is probably an interesting place. There is a gentle-looking blonde woman with a kind face sitting at the table. She is sharpening a small knife. She smiles at you as you approach. I am Nance. Greetings to you. So what are you doing here? Oh, I mainly help Elspeth run her shop. Not what I choose as a path, but there you go. What sort of shop does Elspeth have? Have you met Elspeth? She runs the best smithy in Upper Avernum, if not Avernum. She holds up the knife she's sharpening. It's not quite my area, but it keeps me busy until we can reach the surface. You and just about everyone in Avernum. All of us were sent to live in pits because of who we were, because we refused to fit in, to conform, to submit to unjust standards. Nance's normally gentle face has a steely, determined expression. Every day we live here is an injustice. An injustice we will all gladly face death to right. That is a very brave statement. She looks a little embarrassed. I've been told I have a bit of a tendency to go on and speechify. But it's fun, so I'm not going to shop. Uh, going to stop. Anything else you want to know? You don't seem very happy with your work. A dark look passes over her face. I cared for horses when we lived on the surface. When the Empire exiled us, it took away my entire life's work. That is one of the many reasons I want to return to the surface. Okay, then. How about you? There's a quiet man sitting at the table. He is drinking a mug of clear river water. When you get close, he looks up at you as if he recognizes you. Greetings, adventurers. I'm Eric. What is your business in New Kotra? I'm here to visit a place. What place? If you look around town, you'll find a building you can't enter. What is it? I know of you. You're from unspecified services. You should know that some knowledge is to be given and some is secret. This is secret. When you need to know, you will know. Can we have a hint? Not even that. Excuse me, I need to think about what I need to do here. Good day. Okay, then. And you look like the owner of the place. The bar is, tended, is being tended by a thin man with short black hair, a twitchy demeanor, and a lopsided smile. He wears the traditional Avernite mayor's sash. I'm Crisper, Crisper the barkeep, or Mayor Crisper, whichever you prefer. Why do you have two jobs? Well, I agreed to have two. I'm the mayor for now. Painful, but necessary. But I also run the Phoenix, which is a bit more satisfying. I do all the standard in things. We have an excellent room for only ten gold, and a round of beer is only two. Why is being the mayor such a pain? We pick a new mayor every year. That's the person who takes time off building this new beautiful city to carry out tedious administrative tasks. What sorts of administrative tasks do you have to deal with? Pushing papers, organizing things, meetings, endless hell. And worst of all, I occasionally have to press a gang of hapless adventurers to go on some mission or other. You're in luck! We'll volunteer to be hapless adventurers pressed into doing a mission for you. Excellent. To the southwest somewhere, there's a big ice pudding. It's been trying to eat people, some people traveling this way. As mayor, I really should do something about this. Kill the thing and I'll pay you well. Sounds fair enough. Uh, so you really like running the Phoenix? Yep. It's named Phoenix because this Kotra rises from the ashes of the earlier Kotra. What happened to the earlier Kotra? The former Kotra was destroyed by the Empire in the Empire War. Totally destroyed. I came up here to help build it, especially since it got me away from the spiders. Um, spiders? The giant, intelligent, friendly talking spiders. They're... They're... Just, just hope you never meet them. Sure thing. You know, one thing I will say is... It's nice that I can go into, uh... Ooh, cloak. We could actually use a cloak for our guys. 
it's nice to be able to go into these games and see people from the previous games. Uh, Nance and Elspeth, was it? I remember them. They were a cu they were uh, a couple, a uh, lesbian couple, admittedly, but still a couple who were put down into uh, Vernum simply because of the fact that they were lesbian. You helped them find each other twice. It's nice to see that they've managed to stay together this time. Then there's uh, Asp, who I have seen on occasion now and then. I don't remember how often we've seen him. I don't think we've seen him that often, but you do see him now and then. And there's also... um. This park dedicated to all those lost in the destruction of the original Kotra. You will always be remembered. And there's also CRISPR, who was a, uh... Who was originally a bartender. And... Yeah, it's nice to see him again. Please do not trample my garden. Miles. And I'm guessing that's the, uh, big structure that nobody can enter. Okay, then. I guess we'll not go in there. Let's see here. Miles. Alchemy. Hey, Alchemist! There is an elderly man with graying hair and a neatly trimmed beard behind the counter. His fingers are permanently stained from years and years of working with herbs and mixing concoctions. I am Miles. Miles the Mage. Welcome to my shop. What sort of shop is this? He points to the bookshelves. Each of those scrolls contains a recipe I have mastered. Every plant in these caves I have turned into a wondrous concoction of some sort, and I place all my knowledge at your disposal. Seems like a lot of recipes. Hundreds of recipes. Of course, most of them are useless, but I mastered them anyway. Every plant in Avernum? Okay, not all the plants. I still haven't found a use for black-spotted sponge moss, but I'm working on it. Oh, what's the point of being modest? Seems to me that modesty is a noble character trait. I live in a cave. I mix mushrooms and lichen for a living. I get black backaches all the time. With a life like this, why bother to be modest? <laughs> Slide point. I find it interesting how we can buy a poison potion, yet as far as I know, there is absolutely zero point to it. At my disposal for a price, right? Well, yes. I make potions of all sorts, and you can obtain them for a modest price. More modest than usual, since you are, of course, the surface explorers. Let me know if you want to purchase some of them. We shall. We will keep you in mind. And knowing things. Elspeth's Ironworks. There's a nice rainbow design around the edge of the sign. Do they really try to be so obvious with it? I mean... Does it really have to be? Okay, let's see here. You meet a small, intense woman. She has short hair and wears shiny black leather. Several vicious iron blades hang from her belt. She greets you with a proud smile and a sharp nod of her head. I am Elspeth. Welcome to my shop. Nice shop. Well, thanks. I run this shop with Nance. I make the best iron weapons you're likely to find, and you can purchase them if you got the gold. You can also sell me other stuff. I'm sure I can unload it on somebody. Who's Nance? Nance and I have been through a lot since the Empire sent us down. We were very close. So much so that we just weren't approved of on the surface, if you know what I mean. Then we got separated. How did you get separated? We were living in Kotra when the Empire War hit. They blasted our town apart. We were lucky to escape, but got separated. We didn't find each other for months. Then we heard about the settlement near the surface. There was no way we could stay away. I take it you want to return to the surface. She grins viciously. We will be back on the surface someday. There are no two ways around it. It was wrong of them to throw us down here, and it's up to all of us to make them pay for their crimes. Well, I can completely understand wanting to live on the surface again after you were thrown down for reasons that, frankly, are not that, frankly, I would disagree with. Just try not to kill too many people. The pots contain dried mushrooms. You taste one. It's incredibly bitter. You leave them alone. Hey, gloves! We could use a couple more gloves. Hey, give them to Teresa. Yes, we're robbing people's homes. Shut up. Ooh, bookshelves. Wonder what's in them. Pants. Ooh, the better cloak. Okay, it's not actually better, but it looks better, okay? The green cloak looks better than the other one. Yeah, nothing in the bookshelves. Eh, it might belong to, well, at least someone more literate. Alright, let's see. We got, ah, a couple coins. Don't need to take the fur. 
nothing on the bookshelves. Yes, truly we are adventurers. Breaking into homes and stealing all their stuff. Nice fur. Eh, we'll leave it. Hey, another be of the better cloaks. You can have a purple cloak. Yeah, it'll look nicer on you. I don't know whose house this is, but I'm sure it'll look nicer. And that is the black cube structure. I'll say this much right now. I don't think there's any hidden doors that allow us in, so we're pretty much screwed there. Alright, let's look around outside a bit. See what we can find. We got some time. Couple goblins! Okay, that'll be easy to kill. Alright. Ice lance. That one's dead, and we got some coins. Pretty easy. At the end of this corridor, you find a body. It is in an advanced stage of decomposition, so much so that you can't tell if it was a human, venati, nephil, or something stranger. When you get close, a vague humanoid form coalesces into being above it. It floats in the air and motions for you to come closer. Approach and try to talk to it? Suspecting that the creature is some sort of ghost or other restless spirit, you move closer. Then, too late, it occurs to you that it might be what killed the dead person. The shade's hands are very insubstantial. However, in a moment, very real claws appear at the end of the fuzzy fingertips. It attacks you. Greater Shade! Well, okay. I think we may have it. Repel Spirit. Wait, that's a new spell. Oh, look at that! We can cast Spray Acid now. And I think I saw... Yes, we can terrify people, too. That's interesting. Now that the shade is dead, you can freely inspect the body. Most of its possessions have rotted away. However, it still wears a delicate silver ring on one of its bony fingers. It's not identified, but we'll get it identified soon enough. All right, let's look around here. Forest of Ilgrith. It looks like there's something over there. And a couple of shitrack larvae. Right, wait for them to come a bit closer. Yeah, smite didn't quite work as well as I'd hoped. That works, though. And there we go. See a couple cows. You stumble upon a group of cave cows. These pallid creatures were sent to a vernum by the Empire, where they, where they were bred with each other, fed mushrooms, milked, and eaten. The milk is bitter and the meat is stringy, but the cows are still much in demand, which is why some farmer is desperately miss missing this bunch. You notice that they each have a pair of crosses branded on their hindquarters. These must be the lost cows you found out about in Lukotra. Well, okay then. Let's see. I think this is where the uh, ice pudding is. Alright, let's see. At the end of this passage, you find what looks like the crude lair of some small beast. It's a pile of rocks, but oddly, there's no entry hall. Also, it's covered with a thick layer of frost, which is strange indeed. Approach it. Sure. Ice slime. I was right. Alright. And it'll die very quickly. And there we go. Alright. Mission accomplished. Yes, we know about those. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, looks like the, at the base of one of the trees you find a small patch of healing herbs. It's a valuable alchemy ingredient, and some of the plants look ripe. Nice! Thank you. Those will be very useful. Alright. I doubt there's anything over there of any use, so let's go back to New Kotra and inform them that we completed the quests. And also get the things we have identified. First, we found your cows, Hamar. They were wandering ar around about 20 miles to the south. Hamur looks very surprised. <laughs> really? I am amazed and honored that, with all you must do, you could find my poor cows, too. You are amazing adventurers. I will tell all of your kindness. He wraps you up a large lunch. I am sorry I can provide no better reward than this, but I am still a poor merchant. Luck to you and your travels. <laughs> Bread in the lizard haunch. Thank you very much. I'm sure it will be very delicious. 
Now, as for that, uh, ice pudding. We killed the ice pudding you mentioned, Crisper. You tell Crisper how you slew the ice pu pudding. Well done! Thanks for taking care of that. He counts out you out a generous stack of silver coins. Now get out there and kill other bad things. Got any more missions for us, Mayor? Eh, nothing for you to do for me now, but thanks for offering. What a beer. Oh, we saw a building without doors at the northwest corner of town. What is it? He looks nervous. Oh, we don't like to talk about that around here, trust me. If I could tell you what it is, I would. Any other way I can help you? Okay, him we know. Okay. I don't know if any of the others would tell what it is. I can't find a way in. Okay. Well, we have a few things we can sell. Like the silver ring and that ring which needs to be identified. Okay, um... I think that's gonna be the end of this episode. Next episode, we'll head further northwards. Why not? See what else we can find. We'll buy that guy's boat some other time. That'll be in the next episode. So until then, I'm Chester44, that is Carl Nepor Pollux and Tessia and Teresa. This has been an Avernum 3 Let's Play, and I shall see you all next time.